So another year is coming and with it a boatload of new JRPGs. And that's what this video is all about. The JRPG is not on the comeback tour in 2019. It has always been here strong for the last couple of years. This is the JRPG lineup of 2019. This is a list of JRPGs that have been confirmed or have a high chance of releasing in North America and Europe in 2019. Before I begin, look at the upload date of this video. If a game was announced to be released, after the upload date is obviously not on here but there's a good chance I could have missed a game or two and I'm sure you'll let me know all about that in the comments also I am NOT a bot uploading videos about JRPGs to this channel this list is coming from someone who actually plays JRPGs so I have my own opinion and something to say about all these games I'll have more things to say about some titles and less things to say about others that's just the way it goes so here we go with the JRPG lineup of 2019. Enjoy. Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition. Tales of Vesperia is a game I've been waiting to play again for about 10 years now. Way back in the dark ages of 2008, I took for granted its colorful and vibrant cell shaded look and wish a new Tales of game or any JRPG would release with its graphic style. Tales of Vesperia is probably in my top 5 Tales of games and for good reason. It has a great cast of characters, excellent combat, and a good story. This being the definitive version of the game, it will come with all the extra content we in the West did not get with the original release on Xbox 360. We will be getting all the content from the PS3 Japan only release with full HD and 4K support with 60 frames per second. And in case you are wondering, Tales of the Abyss is the best Tales of game. Don't add me. Kingdom Hearts 3 after 12 years since the original release of Kingdom Hearts 2. After all the spin-offs, the remakes, the remaster, re-releases, delays, a glorified tech demo, speculation, years of no information, time travel, plot holes, cameo appearances, and whatever else there was, Kingdom Hearts 3 has gone gold and is finally releasing in 2019. The game has well over a decade of hype to live up to, and honestly, with all the gameplay trailers I've seen, I say it has a good shot of living up to that height. Kingdom Hearts 3 has to somehow close the book on this story, have enough content to satisfy longtime fans and be accessible to newcomers. Kingdom Hearts 3, I sincerely and severely hope you don't let me down. There's just too much at stake here. I would say it's not your fault for having this much hype to live up to, but after all this much time has passed, you kind of brought it on yourself. Persona Q2. Persona Q2 is a spin-off of the Persona series, letting you play as the entire cast of Persona 3 and Persona 4, along with the cast of Persona 5. What happened to Persona 1 and 2 cast, you ask? Well, those games aren't as popular, so they get the boot. But Elizabeth does carry them to this game in spirit. I played the first Persona Q game for a while and I didn't care much for it because of its Etrin Odyssey elements. You see, the Persona Q games are a mixture of Persona and Etrin Odyssey mechanics. What I couldn't stand was the element of creating a map as you run along in a dungeon. I played dungeon crawlers like Demon Gaze and Labyrinth of Refrain just fine, but I'm not stopping every so often to create a door or mark an important point on the map. I'm just not about that life. But since this is a Persona game and I'm a diehard Persona fan, I am willing to give this game a chance. However, that happening is extremely low because I don't game on a 3DS anymore. As this game is a 3DS only title, it's the only platform this game is releasing on. Unless it gets ported to the Switch, this might be a Persona game I may have to skip personally. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Okay, we all know this game isn't releasing next year, so here are the main points. It's going to be an action JRPG and it's releasing in multiple parts or it's episodic and it's definitely not releasing in 2019. Anywho, nothing more to see here, moving on. Fire Emblem Three Houses now, you can call me a filthy casual fan of the Fire Emblem franchise if you want. I only play Fire Emblem Awakening, aka Waifu Simulator Awakening, aka Thargia is best girl of Fire Emblem, hashtag fight me Awakening, aka this series is now alive and well because of Fire Emblem Awakening and some of you fans are salty about that simple fact. 
Awakening, and I play Fire Emblem Fates, aka Shady AF with its separate three games nonsense. Anyway, after playing those Fire Emblem games, my mouth is watering for a brand new Fire Emblem game. Three Houses looks to increase the scope of the Fire Emblem games, giving you a real feeling of the large scale battles you partake in by showing your army whenever you attack or are attacked. All in all, this new entry looks to step up everything about Fire Emblem. I just hope the Three Houses part doesn't mean that we get three separate versions of the game. They wouldn't do that, right? Nah, maybe just three separate campaigns. God Eater 3. I've always been a fan of the God Eater game since it made its debut on PSP. It's nice to see a God Eater game made from the ground up for consoles so we can get a better leap in graphics. God Eater 3 is of course a hunting style game just like Monster Hunter, so you'll be going around killing monsters called Aragami with your friends, gathering materials to upgrade your weapons and equipment, and you'll also get a lengthy story mode. I can't wait to jump into God Eater 3 and who knows, maybe I'll team up with you guys and we can hunt some Aragami. But but just so you know, I'll be getting this one on PC. So, yeah. Shin Megami Tensei 5. The next mainline title of the Shin Megami Tensei series is on the horizon. At least I hope it is, because as of the recording of this video, the game is pretty much MIA since it's reveal in early 2017, and all we had since then are two teaser trailers. But really, just one because the reveal trailer wasn't really anything. It's shocking to say that we know more about the Final Fantasy VII Remake than we do about this game as of right now, but we can all make a safe bet on which one is going to release first. Hopefully 2019 isn't just a year of getting a lot more information on this title, but that we also see that this game releases. Being an SMT game, I have no doubt this game will be anything less than amazing with all the usual SMT showings that we know and love. Some sort of turn-based RPG with a weakness system, a choice of law and chaos alignment, recruiting the regular bunch of demons, the city of Tokyo getting its butt kicked by said demons, some type of godlike deity or just an actual god that thinks humanity isn't worth a damn so it deems all humans to stop living, and of course this god uses Tokyo of all places on the planet as a location to test humans. I could be wrong and I'm pretty sure I am, but since we don't know much about this game, that, that's all I can really do is make some guesses. Let me know what you think Shin Megami Tensei 5 is going to be. Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2 on PS4. The Legend of Heroes games are a really under the radar JRPG series that not a lot of people know about, and it's my job to raise some awareness of them now. Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2 have already been released on PS3, Vita, and PC, but now both games are coming to PS4. Cold Steel 1 and 2 are part of a technology already released in Japan, and I'm telling you now, if you want to play the latter half of this series, you need to to play Cold Steel 1 and 2. These games have likable characters, solid combat, and a crazy overarching story and world building that will leave you searching for the lore about the games for hours. You need to play these games if you haven't already, and with them releasing on the PS4 in 2019, now is the perfect time. If you choose not to play them, don't blame me when Cold Steel 3 and 4 get announced and you're wondering to yourself if you need to play the previous games, because yes, yes you freaking do. And I know, I know some of you in the comments already know about the Legend of Hero games and it's not just one and two you need to play, that there's Trails in the Sky games and the not yet localized Crossbell games and you know, whatever else there is. But let's just ease these potential newcomers into this nice and easy. You give them the full scope and plethora of games they need to play, you'll probably scare them off. Let's just convince them to start with the Cold Steel games for now. At least I think that's for the best. The Caliglia Effect Overdose. Caliglia Effect was released on the Vita back in 2017 and went under the radar because well, how do I put this lightly without offending anyone? Nah, screw that. It went under the radar because it was on the freaking Vita and nothing else. Now it's releasing in 2019 on PC, PS4, and Switch, and this time it might get the recognition it may deserve. I'll be honest, I don't know much about the Caligula effect myself, but from what I'm seeing, it looks like a game I can personally get behind. I like the character designs, the graphics look good, the story setup seems to be like a Persona game so I can't really knock it there, and the only real concern I have with the game is the battle system, which looks okay to me. I have to play it myself to get a feel for it, but it's definitely a JRPG in 2019 I'll be looking at closely. Grand Blue Fantasy Re. Grand Blue Fantasy Re is a game based off the mobile game of the same name that got overshadowed in terms of popularity because of Fate Grand Order. 
I mean, seriously, even now I'm into Fate Grand Order. This is my current squad. Anyway, that didn't stop the game from getting its own console release. This game looks to have some excellent action combat, fairly good graphics, and from all the sources I can gather for gameplay, the frame rate is locked at 60. And this game is being made by Platinum Games, the people who made Nier Automata and Bayonetta. Oh, Grand Blue Fantasy Re, you had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. So I'll be looking forward to playing this one when it comes out in 2019. Dragon Marked for Death Dragon Marked for Death is a game that has been in the making for a while now. First it was being made for the 3DS and then development switched to the Nintendo Switch. Now it has an official release date for 2019. Dragon Marked for Death is a 2D side-scrolling action RPG that you can play with up to three other people using Nintendo's online service. You'll be able to choose from four different unique characters to play as. Wisely using each character's strength will help greatly in getting through the game's levels. It looks good to me, I like its pixel sprite design. It's Seems like this would be another good game to add to my Switch library when it releases. Dragon Star Valnir. Dragon Star Valnir looks like a game I can play. It's just that, well, it's a Ideal Factory Capella Heart game, and their games, well, let's just say I have to keep my expectations in check when it comes to them. It's a turn based RPG with all battles taking place in the air. There are three different levels of altitudes you can position your characters in on the battlefield, and depending on their formation, you can receive some added benefits. Being able to move your characters up and down on different levels of the battlefield sounds intriguing to me, as it could add a nice Nice layer of strategy to battles. You know what? If anything, I'll pick this game up inevitably when it gets ported to the PC on Steam because trust me, while it's only announced for PS4 now, it will come to PC. I'm 99.9% .9 certain of it. Death and Request. Death and Request is another Ideal Factory and Kapow Heart game. So once again, I have to keep my expectations in check, but to a lesser extent because the combat seems like it's actually going to be great. You'll be able to smash enemies into each other to deal extra damage and smashing them into an ally will allow you to do a team combo. It's a different kind of battle system that looks to be fun and keep you entertained for a while. And of course, being an Ideal Factory Kapow Heart game, the artwork and character Character designs look captivating. So hopefully the gameplay is something I can like. And just like Dragon Star Valnir, it's only announced for PS4 for now, but will come to the PC via Steam sometime after. Super Neptunia RPG. Well, I suppose the third time's the charm with yet another Ideal Factory Kappa Heart game. Super Neptunia RPG is from the Neptunia series that have been going on since 2011, and with a lot of fans of this incredibly niche series, it's not slowing down anytime soon. I expect another Neptunia game will be announced sometime in 2019 for Japan, but for now we are getting this 2D side-scrolling turn-based RPG. And from the looks of it, it doesn't look half bad, almost adopting a Valkyria profile style in terms of battlefield setup with its colorful 2D aesthetic and looking to have have some light platforming elements, it looks like this game might be a fully competent Neptunia game. But I said the same thing about Cyber Dimension Neptunia, and well, that wasn't it, Chief. So while I have some reservations about Neptunia games, I'll probably still be looking to get this one possible. Record of Agoras War Marriage Record of Agarus War Madrid is a game that released on PSP in Japan in 2012. It's a game I fully never ever expected to be localized given how much time has passed. But Ideal Factory kept our hearts decided to grace us with the fourth game in the Agarus War series, releasing only on PC via Steam. The Agarus War games are, in my eyes at least, fairly frustrating JRPGs in terms of difficulty. Normal battles and boss battles especially especially wrecking your crap if you're not fully prepared not only equipment and stats wise, but you need to know the ins and outs of the battle system to make it out of most battles alive. And since I'm a JRPG god, I did finish all of Agarus War games to date. But this one seems to have pulled a 180 and changed things a great deal to a more simple battle system setup, opting for a more straightforward turn-based combat instead of something that's different, at least that's what it looks like from a glance. The most unique things about Agarus War games is the generation style storytelling. You'll be in control of three main protagonists throughout the game and they'll all be descendants from each other. I'll probably be picking this game up day one as I just can't stop myself from playing an Agarus game. Atelier Lulua 
The Atelier games have been going on for a while now, almost being yearly releases. And I'm gonna keep it real with you, the recent Atelier games that have been going back to the PS3 days to now have not been it for me, so there's a good chance I'll be skipping this one. Now if the games were to go back to the Mad Kamiya style, then we can talk. Like with any Atelier games, they are mostly about item creation, combining item A and B to create item C and then create 5 more of item C to use as materials to make item D, or just go out and farm for items. You'll get a turn based battle system with follow up attacks I'm assuming, and it's also a direct sequel to the 3 Atelier games released on the PS3, so if you are a fan of those games, this one should be a treat for you. Nelk and the Legendary Alchemist Nauk and the Legendary Alchemist is a spin-off Atelier game, and this one's gonna be a little different with some changes coming from its combat and gameplay. Instead of the traditional Atelier battle system, this one will have a sort of side view like combat. It looks a little bit like Manakamiya to me. In addition to the usual Atelier item creation, you have town building features. To be honest with you guys, I really don't have much to say on this. Me and Atelier games don't mix, so yeah, I'll be skipping this one. But if you have an interest in this game, let me know all about it. I really do want to gauge the amount of interest the Atelier games have. Dragon Quest Builders 2 Dragon Quest Builders 2 is a game that crosses the features of Dragon Quest with Minecraft. And, well, that's pretty much it. I didn't play the first Dragon Quest Builders game, so I won't be looking at this one much, but I do hear they are fun games to play. So if you enjoy building bases and defending them like in Minecraft and having a Dragon Quest story, well, this game is just for you. Ark of Alchemist. Ark of Alchemist is a new JRPG releasing in 2019 by the developers of the Neptunia games, and holy crap, it's Ideal Factory kept all heart again. Gotta hand it to these guys, they have no shortage of JRPGs in development and releasing. So uh, yeah, more power to them. This one is an action RPG it looks like, and it looks to be fun in the style of the game looks kinda unique. So I'm intrigued, but ultimately I don't think this one is going to be on my radar until it comes to the PC. Only releasing on PS4 now, but I guarantee it will eventually come to PC via Steam. Digimon Survive now, I'm not the biggest Digimon fan out there, and if you ask me to choose between Digimon and Pokemon, I'm always gonna choose Pocket Monsters. But in recent years, Digimon has been making a comeback. The Cyber Sleuth games are pretty damn good, and I played them for a little bit. Now we have Digimon Survive, and this one has my interest as much as Cyber Sleuth did. I am completely enamored by how this game looks and plays. It has a clean, crisp art style and character designs that look great, but the biggest thing that has me about this game is it's tactical combat, and you guys know me, I love me a good tactical game, so I'll definitely be looking closely at Digimon Survive as more information and media becomes available. Hell, the more I look at this game, the closer it inches to me for a day one purchase. Landgressor 1 and 2 Landgressor 1 and 2 releasing on PS4 and Switch are full blown remix of the classics released in the 90s. I never played the Landgressor games, so this might be the perfect opportunity for me to get into them. It has tactical combat that reminds me of Fire Emblem, so that already has my interest peaked. The graphics don't look like anything special, but the 2D look still draws me in. It actually looks like a mobile game to me, but it still looks fun. I think I'll be picking this one up on the Switch because it looks like a game that would be perfect perfect on the go. Mary Skelter 2 Mary Skelter 2 is a sequel to Mary Skelter Nightmares released on the Vita and is going to be a first person dungeon crawling JRPG. You can bring up the 6 party members with you to explore the elaborate sized dungeons and fight the nightmare fiends that attack in random encounters. I do like dungeon crawlers but I never got my hands on the first Mary Skelter game, so the chances of me picking this one up are kinda low. But I do like the character designs and the designs of the fiends that you will face. Time will tell if I want to give this game a shot, but it's worth noting that this game comes with a sort of re remake of the first Mary Skelter game with improvements to the gameplay. Although that is confirmed for the Japanese release, it has yet to be confirmed for the overseas release. So if you're wondering if you need to play Mary Skelter 1, you should probably do that just in case it doesn't come with it in Mary Skelter 2. Cold Vein 
Cold Vein is a game that should have released in September of 2018, but got delayed to 2019 because either the coming months after September was overpacked with games and Cold Vein was going to be completely overlooked, or the game just wasn't ready so they delayed it. But as a wise man once said, a delayed game is eventually good, a bad game is bad forever. Whatever the case, it's coming out for sure in 2019. This is a JRPG I'm really curious about. Mixing anime style and Dark Souls together to make an action RPG it looks to stand out with its unique gameplay. And for that, I'm willing to give Code Vein a shot, even though I don't care for Souls type games. Coming from the creators of God Eater, you won't be alone in facing Code Vein's many challenges. You'll be able to play co op to an extent with a friend to take out bosses and help you in your arduous adventure. So we shall see how this game holds up to a Souls game and if the extra time they got with the delay was indeed worth the wait or not. And there you have it, most of the JRPGs coming in 2019. I am sure I missed a game or two, mispronounced the name of a game, or you can't understand a thing I'm saying. Go ahead and let me know all about that in the comments below. And let me know what JRPGs you are most looking forward to playing in 2019. For me, it's gotta be Tales of Vesperia, Kingdom Hearts 3, and God Eater 3. Remember to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.